Hi, I'm John and welcome back to Hey Bartender. Today, we're going to concentrate on a very popular drink called the Cosmopolitan and its sister, the Lemon Drop. Stay tuned. Well, here we are again. Let's shake it up one more time. Vanessa, welcome back. Um, did you get a chance to visit some bars out there, look around, watch bartenders? I actually did, and on Sunday I got to guest bartend, so that was really fun. So I got to use some of the tricks you showed us. Nice. Where, where were you at? I was at O'Malley's. And uh, what was your first drink? Uh, I think it was a mixed drink. It had vanilla vodka, Kahlua, and soda water in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nate, how about you? Yeah, I, w I, was at, I was at a bar this weekend and um, I found myself uh, counting in my head every time the bartender poured a drink. Uh, nice. Kind of funny. <laughs> so you knew if he was uh, over pouring, under pouring? Or... Uh, yeah, I did. Nice. And Holly? I've just had fun telling all my friends all the new tricks I've learned. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to learn some new ones today. <laughs> Absolutely, nice. And we have a new student here, David. Welcome, welcome. Hey, thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Excellent. And why'd you decided to take the, the course. Um, I wanted to get an insider's look into behind the scenes what goes on in a bar and learn some of the tricks. Hopefully I can apply them to a new job. Absolutely, nice. To review a little bit, uh, Vanessa, Nate, and Holly have already uh, seen this. It's the free pour, the bartender's favorite pour. Just to uh, catch you up again, it's on a four count system, um, like second hands on the clock. What we do is we just go ahead and pick up our glass, we pick up any bottle that we want, we hang on to the top, and then we go ahead and pour it, one and two and three and four. Snap it on off, and then go ahead and check yourself. This is actually one ounce, so we'll just pour right on up here, and voila. Since they went ahead and passed it, you're the guinea pig now, All please right. come on back here and do it. And now, just to mess you up, if it's country western music, don't go to the music because it's a lot slower. One and two and three and four. If it's disco, you're going, one and two and three and four. So go to second hands on a clock, one and two and three and four. And I'd pick up a, you can go ahead and pick up this rum okay. and go ahead and pour it. And let's go ahead and check a little spillage. Yeah, a little, a little, a little okay. sip for the bartender. <laughs> Not bad for your first try though, excellent. Right on. Yeah, when I first heard it, it was a cranberry martini. Then when they mentioned it's um, a cosmopolitan on Sex in the City, boom, it blew all over America and I was making hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, but we can also utilize that same technique when we go ahead and pour, um, especially at home, where you don't want to do that uh, count system. We go ahead and use these big old juices it's kind of hard to count from there. So therefore, that's where this little line comes in very important. Now I don't have to measure, I could just pour up to that line, shake it up and pour accurately every time. It's kind of cool. So, first thing, uh, they're shaken, they're nice, uh, served nice and cold. So again, we go ahead and grab our glass. We go ahead and chill it to the side. Then we grab our glass mixer. I think you know why. <laughs> Matter of fact, um, I used to use my metal. I like my glass because it's a lot more visual. That way the customer can see it and they're kind of dazzled by, God, you pour perfect every time. Here it's kind of hidden a little bit, but sometimes I don't have a glass mixer. So I'll use this, but I'll scratch the line on the inside so nobody knows except me. <laughs> so um, there's several ways uh, bartenders memorize drinks. Pictures in their mind, uh, word associations, grouping drinks, and we'll get into all those other uh, ways. This one, is with the word association. When I first learned this, it was a uh, very trendy cocktail. Very trendy cocktail. Stands for vodka, triple sack, and cranberry juice. Actually, to be honest, the first time I learned this, it was a uh, very trendy ladies cocktail. <laughs> um, and it stood for lime juice. Um, we added a quarter ounce in there. But I didn't get a whole lot of compliments on it. It's very acidic, it's a very powerful flavor. So I kept uh, experimenting, eighth of an ounce, quarter of an ounce, half an ounce, rim the glass with it, um, all these different techniques, but I still never got very many uh, compliments. So I asked one of my friends who always got compliments on his, uh, com or his uh, Cosmo, and he goes, why are you using the lime juice? I go, because uh, that's how I learned it, and it's in a lot of cocktail books, it's in a lot of um, uh, recipes online, and he goes, no. The best way to do it is don't use your house brand, your well brand, the generic stuff, and don't use that lime juice. 
Eliminate that from your word association, just very trendy cocktail, and bump it up to a citrus vodka, such as Absolute Citron or Kettle One Citron. There's hundreds of vodkas out there that are flavored. So therefore, this has the built-in flavor. I don't have to guesstimate with that lime juice. And man, does it taste good. I do that for all my private parties at home. All my friends are going, you're a great bartender, man. You make it great every time I'm going, yeah. I took the credit for my friend. Um, so again, we're gonna go ahead and use our Absolute Citron. We know that free pour count of one ounce. Was everybody counting with me? <laughs> then, half ounce of triple sec. Triple sec is a liquor smoother, a liquor sweetener. It's actually a liqueur, um, but we use it more to sweeten drinks, uh, smoothen them out. Half an ounce, one and two. Then, like I said, my cranberry juice, if I go ahead and put this in here and try and flow it out of a six count, ounce and a half, that's a lot. So I just, again, pour it up to that line. Voila. Then a little shake it up. And notice when I'm shaking it, I actually seal it with the palm of my hand and I turn it so this opening is actually facing my shoulder or the back wall. Because when I shake it, if I didn't seal it, it's okay to hit my shoulder or the back wall. But I've done it like this, where I put it on top. I go, how you doing? Wow! Smack the customer right in the face. Wow. Didn't get a good tip on that. So again, you go ahead and shake it on up. And about five, six shakes is fine. Then to go ahead and loosen it up. I like to use the bar. You can use your hand to go ahead and loosen it up. And then I'll actually pour it from my glass so it looks a little more visual. Strain it on out. This ice is still good, so I can dump it right back in my ice bin. It's still clean. Then you go ahead and pour it. And a perfect pour every time. Then we always put a little lemon twist. I actually like, again, because of uh, sex in the city, uh, they like to be a little more chic. So I go ahead and put a little pigtail in there. Voila. And there you have the Cosmopolitan. Voila. So when these guys come back, it's your turn to make the Cosmo. So, Nate, you're up again. Yes, <laughs> So now we're going to go ahead and make your cosmopolitan. Yeah. Nice. Chill that glass. And that's just a chill glass. Yep. Just to set it to the side. And so one scoop of ice in there. Beautiful. So one ounce of absolute citron. And we'll all count with them. One and two and three and four. Beautiful. And triple sec right here. Half an ounce. Beautiful. And then go ahead and grab your cranberry juice. And a six count. No. <laughs> One and two and three. Good. <laughs> Four, five, six. Oh, I see. <laughs> Flip it around. So this opening is towards the back wall. So just like this. See this opening? You're lucky you, you did seal it good, but Vanessa would have been a little angry if a... Uh... Nice. Beautiful, beautiful pour. And then a little garnish. <laughs> there you go. So once again, to recap, um, Nate was standing in front of the uh, ice bin with uh, all the juices around, and we remembered what this little area is called. Jockey box. The jockey box, and you know why? Just trivia. It's because these little black boxes that suspend all of our juices, they're usually suspended right above the ice, so they're almost like riding the ice like a jockey rides a horse, hence the jockey box. So now we learned the uh, Cosmopolitan. As I mentioned, uh, we have different ways to memorize drinks. Pictures in our mind, we'll get to that. Uh, word association, then grouping drinks. And this is actually my favorite way to do it because there's another very popular drink out there called a lemon drop. It is nothing more than your Cosmopolitan, but we switch juices. So instead of cranberry juice, we go ahead and use sweet and sour. 
That way we can go ahead and give it that, that lemon flavor. I still use, I upgrade it, I still use Absolute Citron, the same thing, the same method that I do with the uh, Cosmo, but swap, swap it on over. So let's go ahead and make one. First thing I do is I go ahead and I use my three-tier tray. I love this tray. It has um, lime juice with a little sponge on there, and that is that uh, Rose's lime juice is one of the most popular out there. It makes it very tacky, so when I dunk it on that sponge side, then I can go ahead and dunk it into either my salt for my margaritas or my third tray down, my sugar. So I dunk it into my sugar. Makes it nice and coated. Then I'm very careful to ice it to the side of my ice bin. One, I don't want to go ahead and knock a lot of that sugar down into my ice bin or down into my glass here. Then I put it to the side. Then, just like we did with our glass fixing cup, a little scoop of ice in there, and you know what I'm looking for. <laughs> One ounce of good old absolute citron. And let me give you a little extra, let me give you a little extra. See, if I tilt my bottle down, I can actually go a little bit longer count. Then, half ounce of triple sec. Ounce and a half of sweet and sour, we can count this up. Or, I'm, you know I'm just gonna pour right to there. Then, shake it on up. Strain it on out. Now, of course, uh, we get in this routine of dumping our ice right back in my ice bin. Obviously, we're not going to do that. Yeah, because it might uh, go ahead and hit the sugar, and then all my ice has sugar in it. And then someone comes up and says, I'd like a uh, scotch on the rocks. Get a little bit of sugar in there. They're not going to appreciate that. So I throw it over into my dump tray over there. Then you go ahead and pour it. And I like to go ahead and use a wedge of lemon. And I dunk this actually in the sugar. And you can actually take uh, lemon wedges and squeeze them into this to make it a little more fresher. I do that at home a lot. Um, and then to go ahead and put it on the side, like that. Then when you serve it, what's kind of nice is a lot of customers will bite into this lemon. And when it's coated with sugar, it tastes identical to those little uh, candies, the lemon heads that we used to eat. And so then when they taste the drink, it tastes just like the lemon head, okay? the lemon drop. Thank you for all your Dear John emails. And I have one here from Juan in Carpinteria. He asks, what is the best way to become a bartender? Get trained. Every manager wants someone who knows the alcohol service industry. So get in there, get trained, then have some fun. And Mimi from Montecito emailed me and she asked, what is with all these flavored vodkas? What can you possibly use them for? Oh my goodness, Mimi. Um, with the explosion of these vodkas, they've actually captured the martini uh, category. It's no longer just with gin anymore. It's with any flavor you want. So if you like cherry, you like uh, blackberry, you like melon, strawberry, we can go on and on, peach. Um, Enjoy, there's a whole family of the vodka flavored martinis. And we have Linda from Santa Inez asks, <laughs> whatever happened to the Brandy Alexander? Actually, when I started my school, I was not even gonna teach any of the cream drinks because I don't really make a whole lot of them. But all the five-star hotels said you better because it is a very popular drink along with the Pink Lady, etc. It is an excellent drink with brandy, brown cream to cocoa, cream with a little bit of nutmeg on top. Oh, exquisite dessert type drink. Okay, now we're gonna get into what a lot of bartenders feel is very, very difficult, the blended drinks. It's difficult because you tend to overpour, underpour, and you want that consistency like a Slurpee. A lot of times it comes out way too chunky, way too runny, and it seems to be very difficult, but I got a great little trick for you. Even if you're doing it at home, you can do this. It'll work perfect. Um, Pina Colada is uh, very popular out there, so you buy a book or you go on the web and you uh, find out the recipe for a Pina Colada. A lot of them are pictured in this nice Poco Grande glass. It's also known as a hurricane glass. Uh, very exotic, but you learn the recipe for this glass. Then you um, go to another bar and they have a souvenir glass, about this tall. Now you're going again, oh, how do I, how do I fit that recipe into this one? So again, you're back to that guesstimating. At home you go, I don't have that glass, I have this one little rock glass. So now how do I take that recipe that I learned and fit it into here? It's very, very simple. First thing you do is you go ahead and take whatever glass you want. Okay, let's go uh, for the home bartender. You have this glass at home. You go ahead and just fill it to the top with ice. 
just like we would regular make a, a drink. Then you go ahead and take your rum, put it in there if you so desire, and then fill it up with your pina colada mix. So we're just going to start with that one ounce. Notice I didn't even count, I just went to that imaginary line in my mind. Then we take our pina colada mix, and even though it's a commercial mix out there, they've really done a lot of work on it. It tastes really good. It has the coconut flavor and the pineapple. Um, we used to make it from scratch with Coco Lopez or Coco Bow. It's a coconut custard or a coconut milk. Um, there's been a few times where that coconut custard, I actually used a little ice cream scooper to scoop it out of there to get the exact measurement. It sounds like it'd be perfect, but I put it in there and it didn't blend up properly. So I had little clusters of this slimy coconut <laughs> chunk in there. My customers sipping on it, they're going, God, John, this tastes really... Oh, oh what, is, what is that? I'm going, what? I'm going, I don't, I don't know, but I don't like this. Okay, so I've gotten away from that. I've gone back to just the mix. Um, Master Mixes, uh, Mr. and Mrs. T's Pina Colada Mix is excellent. But back to this. We go ahead and pour it. Now, if you notice, I'm going to actually pour it a little bit short because what I want is a little more ice to the consistency of mixture. So when I blend it, it actually will crush down and rise here and get that perfect blend, the slurpy effect that we're looking for. Then I go ahead and throw it in my blender. And you know, just like we did on the uh, shaker glass with the Cosmopolitan, you know I'm gonna make a little line on this. So now I never have to worry about it. I can just put my ice in there to that line, consistency of ice, pour in my alcohol, fill PD Colada mix to that line and blend it on up. Now, like I said, blended drinks um, are kind of a, a hassle because it makes a lot of noise, as you'll soon find out. Um, plus, uh, a lot of customers um, don't like frozen drinks. It gives them kind of a frozen headache. So actually, we could just make it on the rocks. You know, do a little uh, on the rocks, hand it to your customer so that you don't have that ice headache. You should blend um, these drinks at least probably 20 seconds, uh, 30. Then that's the end that I listen to. If I hear those, I know there's still big chunks of ice in there, so I don't want to serve it. So I just let it keep going. <laughs> here so you know none of the ice then you can go ahead and pour that perfect consistency and you get that perfect pour every time now this is really important when it comes to multiple drinks I got this little cheat sheet line you know my blender has four or five lines a lot of blenders already have built-in uh, uh, measurements so actually I'll just go to those measurements but I'd say it was five of them so now I have uh, my fifth line way up here. I'm gonna fill with ice up to that level. I'm gonna go ahead and pour five shots of rum in there, fill all the way up close to that line with a pina colada mix, blend it up and pour five. Perfect, every time pina coladas. That's it for the pina colada and the frozen. We'll add some more to this when we come back. Today we're gonna be making a Washington red apple. It's a shooter, it's called that because it tastes like a Washington Red Apple itself. I'm very excited today. I'm here with the bartender, Kurt. Nice Good to meet you. John. And you have a special drink for us today? Yeah. Today we're going to be making a Washington Red Apple. It's a shooter, it's called that because it tastes like a Washington Red Apple itself. We make it with Canadian whiskey, we prefer Crown Royal here, sour apple pucker, and cranberry juice. Now what you do is get the shaker, fill up with some ice, and the way I like to do it is a one or a two count to a four count of Crown Royal and Apple Pucker. So I go one, two, three, four, Set this back down, just a splash of cranberry juice. like that. I get a 14 ounce glass, shake it up just like this, should be enough right there. Set this over here, get my strainer, pour it just like that. Perfect, that's your Washington Red Apple. Additionally, you can make it into a cocktail as well. 
Any pewter can be made into a cocktail. All you do is just fill up a nine ounce rocks glass with ice and you can just pour it straight in. You can enjoy it, drink it slowly instead of having to shoot it back with a nice cocktail straws. Now, actually, um, is this one of your favorite drinks? It is actually my favorite cocktail and shooter. I like it because I tend to like whiskey more than any other type of alcohol. And it's something that everybody enjoys, you know? It's like, some people say they don't enjoy whiskey. They try it, they have no idea if it's even in there, you know? Nice, nice. Yeah, so I've tried it, I love it. It tastes just like a Washington apple. And I got a little tidbit for you. Um, a bartender about 15 years ago showed me this little trick. Sometimes presentation is everything. But you can go ahead and take that Washington apple and pour it actually into a little brandy snifter and it looks like an apple. It does. <laughs> Enjoy, thank you again very Thanks, much. Guys. And it looks like we have a email from Monique in Montecito. She asks, she asks, do most people consider a good drink to be a strong drink? Oh, absolutely good question. It is true, almost everybody uh, that goes behind the bar says, I'll make you a nice stiff one, they consider that a very good drink, but it's absolutely incorrect. We always start low because we can always add more alcohol. You want to be able to taste your drink and ta have some taste buds when you're eating some food. So always start low, you can always add more later. We're going to get into the Martini family. Now the Martini family actually are some of the most complicated drinks because there's so many ways to do it. Uh, for many, many years, I, I kept researching and testing on my clientele, asking other bartenders, what is the perfect way to make a martini? Because every time I served it one way, customer goes, that's horrible. Um, or a different way, they'd go, no, it's not enough vermouth, too, too, uh, too much vermouth. Um, to give you a few examples, you can have it up, you can have it on the rocks, you can have it shaken, thanks to James Bond, shaken and not stirred, you can have it stirred. Um, you can have a wet one, you can have a dry one. So there's all these little variations and to get it exactly right gets a little bit sticky and you'll see bartenders get confused out there all the time. I finally, finally after all these uh, years found out a little combination which I'm going to show you today. I'm not a particular fond uh, uh, lover of vermouth but a lot of people are. It is very powerful. So when you start off kind of heavy, uh, you'll hear ratios, two to one ratio, five to one ratio, or parts, two parts to one part. I don't deal with any of those because it's, again, complicated. I have one bartender go, I always make it straight up and it's always a five to one ratio. So I just break this down into fifths. And I go, well, wait a minute. The top is a lot bigger than the bottom. So what fifth do I take? The top part of the bottom. He goes, oh, the bottom part. So again, we take our glass here, or we can make it on the rocks. Um, Nate, how would you like this first one, up or on the rocks? Uh, up. Up? I knew you were going to make me work. <laughs> Put a little scoop of ice in there. Before I go ahead and pour this quarter of an ounce, I just want you to kind of get a little idea of how uh, powerful this vermouth is. Go ahead, smell that, pass it on down. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and it's very actually hard to describe as a bartender. Um, it's almost like perfumey, almost like a raisin, but it's very powerful. What, is it, what does it smell like to, to you, Holly? It smells like... It smells like teriyaki sauce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a new one. <laughs> Fruitcake. <laughs> okay. How about you, Nate? Uh, almost like paint thinner. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, even though it, it does have a sweet aroma and it's dry, so you'd think they're contradictory of statements. But yes, it's a very, very powerful thing. And just like I mentioned in another show, I always start off low, quarter of an ounce, because I can always add more if they don't like it. But if I add too much, I can't take it away, now I have to go ahead and dump that drink and make a whole new one. So, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and count it out, just a one count and a one. Then, what would you like, gin or vodka? Gin. And would you like the house brand or would you like a little kick up? Bombay Sapphire. Oh, then of course you'd pick that one. And that's I don't. Fine. <laughs> no, we'll go with, uh, I do have a Bombay. How about this one? I don't have the Sapphire here. Two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine. Then we can go ahead and shake it like James Wan wants it. So I put that on top, go ahead and seal it with my hand. Give it a quick little shake. This ice is still good, so I dump it right back in my ice tray, keep that kind of nice and full. Go ahead and pour it. 
and a little olive garnish. And there you have a Bombay martini. This looks classy. Now, you notice that I did shake it. There's a huge war going on out there. There's the traditionalists that say you should never shake a martini. Then there's the nouveau um, generation that say we'll shake it up. We'll shake it up as hard and as long as we want because the colder I can present this drink, the better it will taste. And this is kind of true. When you go ahead and shake a lot of your alcohols, that coldness acts like ice water in your bloodstream. So it actually does uh, bring out a, another dimension to it. But with a martini, if you notice, it's almost pure alcohol. Therefore, when we shake it, this traditional camp says you're watering it down. You're actually melting that ice. The more you shake it, the more watered down it is. It's called bruising a martini. Bruising a martini. So in that case, um, this is where the art of bartending comes in, where you really got to know your customers. Um, or if you're having a private party, you got to know your friends. Do they like it with a little water in it, a little water residue? No problem. Or do they like it traditional? And I got another email here from Suzanne from Longpoke. She asks, Dear John, what's the difference between the house brand and the others? Well, the house brand is ge usually the generic alcohols. Then we have the call brand, which we usually go put on the back bar and display. It's got its name because we call it by its name, so call brand. It's a little more purified. Then also we have the premium and top shelf, which are actually more purified and obviously a little more expensive. And Joey from Santa Maria asks, what is in a mojito and why is it so popular? Excellent question. Actually, one of the most common mistakes on any muddled drink, which is the mojito is one, is we go ahead and we mash up all the fruit. It has the limes and the mint leaf. Like I said, when you mash that up, you actually tear the fruit up. Huge misconception because the customer is sipping on that going, hey, this tastes pretty good. Oh, I've got all these mint leaves in their teeth along with the lime. So now they can't even drink it. So when we muddle a drink, which we'll cover in another show, um, we gently rub it to extract the flavors and the oils out of the mint. Then you have a very fresh rum, lime, minty, soda flavored drink called the mojito. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Hey, bartender, I'm John, and I will be seeing you at the bars.